So we're going to talk about a new kind of loop. There's actually a method that's been added recently to array objects in JavaScript, and this method is called for each. What it will do is it will call a function one time for each element in the array. So we have an array here called dwarves. It's got 12 strings in it, 12 names. This dwarves dot for each is going to call this function, this one right here, once for each element in the array. And there are three pieces of information, three parameters, that the for each method is going to pass in. The for each method looks to the array and says for each time it's going to call this function, it'll pass in the item, so the actual string, it'll pass in the index, 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 11, and it also passes in the entire array, so you've got a reference to the entire array if you wanted to manipulate it somehow. So if I was to put a console.log inside here, and I wrote out index and item, when I run this, what I get is there's the index numbers, and here's the items. You can see number and string. That's all this does. So this behavior could be replicated with a for loop, with a for in loop, with a while loop, but it's a built-in method now for the array object. It just simplifies things for us. Now another way that we could write this, um, what typically gets done is instead of putting the name of a function in here, because you're not necessarily going to be using this same function or somewhere else inside your code. The, be the behavior, the functionality that's inside this function is usually tied pretty closely to this object. So what people will do is they will actually put an anonymous function right here, right inside. So these elements, these parameters rather, are going to be placed in there and we put our console statement delete that. If we run this again, the exact same thing's going to happen. So we get the same 12 elements calling the for each method once for each one of them, and there's our thing. So we're going to do something else inside this function just to add a little bit of functionality. What we're going to do is we're going to loop through, look at every one of the names, and compare them all to the string Thorin. If it's Thorin, we're going to convert it to uppercase. If it's anything else, we'll convert it to lowercase. So if item, that's the string, equals Thorin, we want uppercase, else we want lowercase. And we could create a new variable here, or we can just reuse, overwrite the old one. This is a local variable within this method, so we may as well just reuse it. So we will do to uppercase, and item equals item to lowercase. All right, we'll run this one more time. And there we go. All the strings, except for Thorin, have been converted to lowercase. Now these are not special words, keywords in any sense. They're just variable names. These variable names can be anything, anything you want. They can be Frank, Chuck, and Harold if you want. The reason that I use these names is so it helps me remember what they represent. I mean, you can go in here and just say, a, B, and C. It's going to work. It's going to create three variables. They're going to hold the values. But when you're programming, it's nice to have a sense of what you're actually working with. So item, to me, represents, oh yeah, okay, it's the actual item from the array. Index, it's the number from the array. Array, that's the whole thing. That's the array. So that is a for each loop, which is a method on every array object.